This is a presentation of the 19th Annual Colorado Snow and Avalanche Workshop, a program of the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, Friends of CAIC, and the National Avalanche Center, presented by Dina Fit and Pomoka. Hi, my name is Ron Simonais. I am an avalanche forecaster with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. This presentation is about geeking out over videos of avalanche release. The videos in this talk are from the archive of Know Before You Go. Before I start, I would like to thank the people that took the time to look over this talk and make sure things are adding up. Since this talk is about drive slab avalanche release, we may as well remind ourselves how they start. First, a crack in a weak snowpack layer needs to be initiated. If the crack is big enough, it starts to propagate under the load of the, load of the overlying slab and fracture the weak layer across the slope. Once the slab loses its grip, it breaks from its surroundings and starts sliding down the slope. But is it always so simple? When you look at this video, it seems fairly straightforward. The explosive initiate a crack, the crack propagates across the slope, the slab breaks loose from its surroundings and starts sliding down the slope. However, if you look at this enhanced video, things seem slightly more complicated than it appears to the naked eye. We can see that in some areas, cracks in the snow surface start to form while weak layer fractures are still propagating across other sections of the slope. And in some areas, the slab sliding motion appears to be driving the tensile failure. In other words, we still see av the avalanche release sequence, but on a slope scale, the timing of the steps in this sequence can become blurry. In this presentation, I will give a brief explanation of how Eulerian video magnification works. By saying video magnification, I mean magnifying subtle changes in color and pixel intensity to the point where they become visible to the naked eye. We will discuss some of the benefits of video magnification, we will track crack propagation across the start zone and over time, and I will make a few crack propagation speed estimates. For the rest of the talk, I will use tortured versions of this video, but before we dig too deep into it, there is an important insight we can already draw from this video. Snowboarding could be dangerous sport. To start, let's talk about how videos are magnified. How do we get a video like this where we can see slab deformation well before we can see cracks starting to appear on the snow surface? The first thing I did is to stabilize the video. So, the avalanche area is in the same location throughout the entire video. In other words, every pixel location in the video points to the same location on the slope throughout the duration of the clip. Now, if we aggregate a collection of neighboring pixels, we may capture small changes that are only reflected in a few of those pixels. For example, let's look at the changes in pixel intensity in this rectangle. This plot represents the average pixel intensity in the rectangle from the previous slide. Pixel intensity is a fancy way to describe brightness. Brighter colors have higher pixel intensity, and darker colors have lower pixel intensity. The red line in the chart represents the average pixel intensity value for each frame. I added a 5 frame running average in green, just to make the overall pixel intensity signal clearer. From the chart, we can see that the pixel intensity increases. Therefore, the brightness also increases as the video progresses. However, those changes are not enough to be visible to the naked eye. In fact, this is what, what the changes in brightness throughout the video look like. The colors in this gray rectangle are progressively changing from left to right to reflect the values in the chart. For our purposes, we are most interested in these small waves in pixel intensity throughout the video. 
So I use temporal filter to filter out the noise and identify meaningful changes in pixel intensity throughout the video. Here, the black line represents the filter signal and its y-axis is on the right. If we multiply, multiply the filtered pixel intensity changes signal and add it to the original video, we can start to see small changes that we won't be able to see otherwise. For example, here are the grayscale colors of the area in a rectangle after an enhancement of 150 times. There are a few technical steps and details in this process that I didn't cover, but this is the basic idea. The first thing I noticed after I did a Lorian magnification is that visible changes on the snow surface appear with some delay. For example, in this video, we can see slab deformation well before we can see cracks starting to appear on the snow surface. This makes me think that we should consider video-driven crack propagation speed measurements that rely on the appearance of surface cracks as lower band speed measurements. In this video, I compared cha the changes between each video frame and the frame bef frames before it. I then colored those changes in red to highlight the sequence in slab deformation across the slope and over time. If we break this video into smaller sections and run it in slow motion, we can see that the fracture initiation is at about frame 32. And it takes 0.6 to 0.65 seconds until we start seeing slab deformation beginning to run away in front of the snow border. This line represents a rough outline of the deformation boundary. Here we can see that the slab deformation is advancing faster and mostly in a downslope uh, down slope direction. There is still no visible deformation in a cross slope dire direction. In the next half a second, we see the slab deformation keeps moving down and across the slope. Again, this is the, an estimate of the other boundaries of the deformation zone as it reaches the stack wall and keep advancing in the cross slope direction. At this point, tensile cracks are starting to form as the slab starts its downslope motion and the leading edges of the slab deformation are reaching the far ends of the release area. The cracks on the surface are the first visible sign of the developing avalanche. We already saw the weak layer cracks propagating across the slope for three snowboard turns or about three quarters of a second. However, until now, neither the snowboarder or the photographer have any visible clue of what is going to happen in the next few seconds. Now the weak layer fracture already crossed the entire release area and the slab is no longer attached to the slope. And we have an avalanche. So in this video, we see that in this avalanche, weak layer failure expanded in a downslope direction first. As the slab lost its support over larger areas, cracks started to propagate in the cross slope direction. Cracks on the snow surface appear to be related to the downslope motion, and the slab started to slide down the slope before the deformation wave reached the outer areas of the start zone. Since slab defo deformation drives crack propagation, we can estimate the crack propagation speed from the leading edges of the slab deformation as they advance across the slope. But first, why do we care about fracture speed? There are several reasons why we should care about it. One of those reasons is fracture propagation velocity can suggest how easy it is for the snowpack to maintain a weak layer fracture across the slope. The easier it is for a crack to propagate, the likelier it is to reach further away and for the avalanche to become larger relative to the slope. This sits well with the fact that Hard slab avalanches tend to be larger than soft slab avalanches. And also, cracks tend to propagate faster under hard slab than under slow slab. 
it is also interesting. Well, it is interesting to me. For speed estimation, I estimated the snowboard height to be a meter 75, and I used this size in pixel to calculate the distance. The initial crack propagation speed around the initiation point in this avalanche was just over 11 meters a second and about 25 miles and 40 kilometers per hour. This is not too far off from the propagation speed measurement on PSD. Things started to advance much faster as the, tip got, as the crack tip got further away from the trigger point. We don't know exactly how the crack propagated under the slab, but if we assume that the propagation distance is similar to the distance covered by the deformation front, propagation speed increased to over 100 meters per second and over 225 miles and 360 kilometers an hour. The average propagation speed from the initial, initial point was about 17 meters per, meter per second. Fracture velocity started to slow down as the crack got closer to the stack wall. It is hard to know how crack travel across the slope and then when they started to propagate in the cross slope direction. From all the possibility you can think of, this showed the fastest crack propagation speed combination of location and start cross slope propagation time. In the cross slope direction, fracture speed was about 20 meters per second and about 15 meters per second from the, from the initiation point. And if you wonder what the sliding speed of this avalanche was, well, here you have it. The maximum sliding speed in this video is about 14.4 miles per hour. We don't know what the slope below the start zone looks like and how it may affect the sliding speed. But if the sliding acceleration remained the same, this avalanche will reach a speed of 60 miles per hour in 11 seconds. So in this video, we can see that crack propagation speed changed as it advanced across the start zone. It increased as it got away from the initiation point and slowed down as it got closer to the edge of the release area. And maximum downslope crack propagation speed was higher than cross slope crack propagation speed. You may already figure that one out for yourself and I hope you're not disappointed. Other than that, I show that with a decent quality video, small computer and a wee bit of math, we can track weak layer fractures and make a few measurements. However, this is an ongoing work and I only have a few good videos to work with. To continue this work, I'm looking for more good videos of Avalanche release. Please drop me a note if you have any. And thank you for watching.